Hello guys, I'm Megan Graham and I am here with Yorkie Storytime Live and I hope you guys are having a great Sunday. Oh, are you? He's always first. My husband Jeff is actually in the background. Let's see, I'll turn the camera a little bit. He's in from Aspen and Simba is obsessed with Jeff again and doesn't care about me at all. All right, honey. Oh, look. Oh, Simba. Simba wants to be, he wants the elastics. Simbers. Daddy might have to take you away if you're being naughty. No. Lemmy, can you do me a favor? Can I have a spray bottle, please, so that the cat doesn't eat the elastics today while I'm filming? He's really obsessed with them. Jeff is getting the spray bottle so that the cat, I have the spray bottle so you cannot have the elastics today because the cat ate the elastics the other day. Um, who is on with me today and what cities are you guys in or um, what states are you in? I'm always curious who I'm chatting with. And Alfie is always, this is my little Yorkshire Terrier, Alfie. He is always the first one that wants to get groomed. So he's always in my lap right away. And so I'm going to groom him today and then I'm actually going to go out for a walk. It's a oops. Simba, no, Simba, oh, <laughs> Simbi, go on. My cat is a troublemaker. I think you guys just saw that. Um, anyway, I'm here with Yorkie Storytime Live. Hello, it's so nice to see you. I love that you're in the UK and I forget what part of the UK that you are in. Um, one of my best friends is from Yorkshire, which is pretty funny. I hope you're having a great week. My dogs are badly in need of a grooming. And my husband, um, excuse me, little troublemaker. The cat is absolutely obsessed with the elastics and he actually ate some last week. So I really wanna keep him away from them. I actually set up a little table so he couldn't get them and I have a spray bottle. Go, go away. Hey, LJ. Oh, that's awesome that you're from upstate New York. So I take it, we, Jeff and I are in Boston. So I take it your weather is probably a little bit warmer than here. It's about 30 or 35 degrees out, but it's super sunny. And I think it's supposed to get to 50 um, this, this week, which is amazing, especially because Jeff is visiting um, from Colorado. So my husband has a ski shop in Aspen, Colorado, and he's away for most of the winter, but he's visiting right now, which is amazing. And all of our Yorkshire Terriers were so, they were so excited that Jeff was home and they went crazy as did the cat. Oh, hello. <laughs> Are you laughing over there, honey? No. No. He's doing an order for his ski shop for next season. And apparently I'm not supposed to be interrupting him right now, but um, it's my nature to interrupt him a lot of times when he's here because I'm so excited. The cat is coming back to the table so he can try to steal some things. We're gonna spray him. No, no, get, go. He doesn't really care about water. It doesn't obviously bother him at all. Do you wanna get sprayed? You cannot have elastics, go on. Go. I think he's behaving extra poorly today. <laughs> he's obsessed with this table, honey. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh my goodness. So I might be pulling up some questions. Um, a, there were a lot of questions this week and I had a super busy week. Um, I know I told you guys last time, but I had some doctor's appointments. So I didn't get to do as much editing and work last week as I wanted to. You are really distracting me, Simba. Um, so I need to catch up a little bit because I have a partially edited video. Um, one thing that people were interested in last week was actually for me to show my meals. Um, I get prepared meals that somebody cooks for me every week to keep me on track. And I think there's a lot of good healthy meal prep ideas. Um, so I think I'm actually going to be sharing those. Jeff, that perch, could you look at that? Cause it looks like it's literally going to fall down. The cat tree. Um, 
I'm watching the cat playing with his cat perch. And for some reason it's doing that, which seems not very secure. Oh, it's 26 now, but we'll be nine tonight. And we'll get to 59 on Wednesday. That's so crazy that it could be that cold and then that warm. It's like a difficult week to even get dressed for, isn't it? But I think all of us are super excited for spring. Oh, look, okay, the cat has moved on. It looks like he's over at his scratching board, which is good. So I am gonna pull up some of the questions that people were asking me this week on YouTube and see what questions are relevant as I actually did not go on to, to see them. So there's a really sweet comment from Billy and she said, I love seeing your Yorkies. I had Sir Arthur for 14 years I am too old to get another one now, but I cried when I saw yours. They are very good looking Yorkies, Billy. Um, Billy, I don't think you're ever too old to get a Yorkie. And I feel like there are so many senior pets that are just waiting to be adopted. And so what about getting a senior pet that really needs a home and needs some love? You have obviously such a kind heart to have made such a kind comment. So I say, look for a Yorkie that's a senior and give a beautiful senior a home. It would be so excited to have you. You sound like an amazing person. Um, this person, CD, says, hello, I have a Chorky. She's four pounds and a very picky eater. She does not like eating dog food. I've tried. I've also tried frozen dog food in the refrigerated section, no luck. So I end up feeding her people food mixed with rice. What do you suggest? Um, I would suggest trying a little sample pack of the Just Food for Dogs and seeing if there is a flavor that your dogs like because Just Food for Dogs basically is people food and there is sometimes rice mixed in. So I would try the Just Food for Dogs as it's very balanced and nutritionally complete. And I do have a link below in my description with a link to Just Food for Dogs, but I would give it a try. Um, if your dog really isn't eating, I would talk to the vet and just make sure that everything is okay with your dog because um, it may just not like the foods that you're offering it, but I would never offer a dog people food because it's also one thing that you'll find is that Yorkies are extremely smart. And if you let them get away with something such as eating people food, they will train you to do it all the time. So it might just be that your dog prefers people food. Um, but if you basically only let it have dog food, I would assume that it will make the choice to eat dog food as well. Um, I know that Alfie, when I first got him, was not crazy about eating and I had to almost like hand feed him. But when I switched him off of the dry kibble that the breeder had him on to just food for dogs, he started loving it. And now mealtime is his favorite time. Just spraying the cat to keep him away from me. <laughs> this person says I'm doing research and this is um, let Ari play. I'm doing research for a puppy. I really like calm dogs, small, non-shedding and easy maintenance. I'm conflicted between a Yorkie toy poodle and a multi poo. If you guys hear a crash, it's because the cat is on the shelf below my computer. He's decided that's a great place to be. Um, hopefully it won't be a crash that involves my laptop. Um, so this person that's looking for a calm small dog, I don't know about you guys that already have Yorkies, but I don't think that if you're looking for a super calm dog, I would say to get a Yorkie. They are really spirited. Um, they tend to bark and they have a lot of energy. I think it's probably true for a multi-poo as well. Um, if you're really looking for a quiet dog, I would go for something like a King Charles Spaniel. They're much calmer, they like to lay around, they don't bark a lot, um, but I would not really describe a Yorkie as calm. Um, hey Prissy, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us today. It's so nice to see you on here. Um, Prissy, where are you joining us from? I'm in Boston. I know we've got people from the UK, um, upstate New York, and a few other places as well. And um, anybody that's on, don't feel shy about, you know, saying hello, commenting. This is a super friendly place. And if you have any questions and things like that, um, no question is a dumb question. So just feel free to join in on the conversation. Um, really, no one's allowed to be unkind to anyone else here because they wouldn't be here anymore. Um, but it really tends to be a great group that we have for Yorkie Storytime Live. So don't be shy about, you know, saying hello. Um, 
If you guys can think of it, I would really appreciate it if you can go ahead and hit the like button. If you're not already subscribing, please go ahead and subscribe. Every single like and every single subscriber makes such a big difference for my YouTube. And I've been really working to grow it and have it become my business. Um, and I love to share my knowledge about Yorkies and answer your questions on here. Tiffany, how are you? Thank you for joining us today. That's so nice of you. I hope you're having a great and relaxing Sunday. Um, Sundays, by the way, are my Saturday because I work at my hair salon on Saturdays. So today is my first day off to relax and chat and give the dogs a nice little brushing. They just had their weekly bath yesterday. So I'm just kind of getting out the tangles and they really, really need a grooming. So they're going in two weeks to get beautiful new haircuts and they're going to look awesome for spring. Thanks for going ahead and hitting the like button, guys. I really appreciate that. That means so much to me. Oh, Sharon, thank you so much. It's so, it's, it's so hard because I usually use people's screen names. Sometimes it's tough for me to make that association. I hope that you and Sparkle Joy are having a really great weekend. We are having an especially great weekend because we're all so happy that my husband, Jeff, is here. I know I turned the computer before so everybody could see, but my my hunk of a husband is back there doing some work and like wishing that <laughs> he's wishing that I would stop interrupting him, but I can't and I won't. So I'll just keep doing it. <laughs> LJ, that's a super good idea to make a video of um, giving them a bath. I just have to film I, or I have to figure out how to do it. Um, so the way that I do give them a bath is actually in the kitchen sink. Um, so it may not be the best angle because we have so we live in Boston, which means we have a teeny tiny kitchen. Would you say it's like eight, eight by eight feet, honey? Bigger than that. No, no really? The whole kit, the kitchen's like 12? 12. 12 by 12. Maybe it's like 12 by 12 feet, but it's super tiny. So you guys will really get a glimpse into our kitchen. It is not bad. I would say it's not been renovated in about 20 years and it's super, super tiny, but I doubt you guys really care. I mean, it's more about seeing how I safely give the dogs a bath and actually the cat gets a bath too, but you probably are not interested in seeing that, but he's a super good cat and he just lays down and lets us give him a bath. He does a little meowing, but um, he's pretty amazing. I think he is in the kitchen right now on the counter would be my guess, but we just got something called scat and you put it on the counter it's compressed air and when your cat jumps onto the counter the compressed air goes off and scares your cat out of the kitchen which will be great because we don't want him hurting himself on a burner or eating our food that's cooling or something like that so i will let you guys know but my mom uses that for her cats and it really helps to keep them off of the kitchen counters um i love that idea though and i will absolutely make a video I know I'm not supposed to interrupt you, honey. I totally know. But can you just make a note for me to make a video about giving the dogs a bath, please? He's probably never coming again. He's <laughs> Jeff wants to run away. Um, David, how are you? You're from Manchester in the UK. Um, so is it is it six hours ahead in the UK? If it's four, is it like 10, 10 o'clock there? I'm thinking it probably is. Um, thank you so much for joining us, David. Do you have a Yorkie as well? Or are you thinking of getting one? And Olivia says, um, hi, I just got a new Yorkie puppy. Congratulations. It's exciting. And have been using your videos for a lot of what I do for her. So thank you for all of the advice for me and Toffee. Cutest name in the world. And um, I'm really glad that you like um, the information. When I first got a Yorkie, I really had to figure out a lot of the stuff on my own and I did not have good grooming habits and things like that. And I have learned so, so much. And I just want to make it easier for people, not only when they get a Yorkie, but also to understand the temperaments of Yorkie so that if they're looking for a dog that does not have the personality of a Yorkie, I don't want them to get a Yorkie. I want people that love that personality, that spunk, that occasional yappiness to get Yorkies. Um, but I'm really, really happy that that is helpful for you. And I'm excited for you about your new puppy. That's super exciting. I, I love Yorkie puppies. 
<clears throat> so Sharon says, um, you can use the screen name. Oh, thank you so much. When I first joined your channel, I introduced myself using my name. You two are a beautiful couple. Thank you so much, Sharon. He is so cute and so nice. And the best thing is that my husband loves Yorkies as much as I do. So he helps me to take care of them. He tries to do little ponytails, which obviously are not as good as mine, but they're still pretty good. Um, and he's just really gentle with the babies. And I just, I like that I found somebody that loves the dogs as much as I do. And also is just like the, Jeff is the sweetest human being I can ever imagine. So I am very lucky to have a husband like him who's so nice and also happens to be really, really cute. So thank you. I'm. I sure love him. <laughs> You're welcome, Olivia. And thank you so much. It, it Just so you know, it always really means a lot to me to hear from people that are enjoying my videos because it tells me that I'm doing the right thing by making them. Um, when I started making these videos, I realized that there were not a lot of videos out there on how to care for Yorkies. And I do think that a lot of the things that I talk about with caring for Yorkies also pertain to other, um, you know, other dogs as well, other small dogs, especially. Um, but I think it's good to know things that are specific to the breed because they're, they're kind of a dog breed unlike any other. So I love to share all of that information with you guys. Um, and Sharon, seriously, it is such a blessing. Um, I, when I was, when I was younger, I felt like everybody was meeting their husbands or their people. And I didn't, you know, I didn't meet someone in my early 30s or 20s or whenever anybody else did. And I happened to meet Jeff when I was 38 years old. And I didn't even believe that he could be as sweet of a person as he is, but he is super, super sweet. And um, he's even sweeter six years later than when I first met him. So I really lucked out basically. Oh, David, I'm so sorry for, for your loss. Um, Getting, losing a Yorkie is so hard. And I think it's like, I know for a lot of people that I talk to, it can be really, really, Elsie has a little tangle here. So just kind of getting that out. Um, but I know it can be really hard to even think about getting another one when you have lost one, because it's just hard to open your heart again. Um, but I think when you love Yorkies, you're also, you're, you're doing that Yorkie a favor to give it a great home. So I'm excited for you that you're thinking about getting a, another Yorkie. It won't be like your other one, but it will be so special. And you'll find, like I didn't, after my other Yorkie Teddy passed, I was really, I was really worried about getting Alfie and Alfie's the one that I'm holding here now and I'm grooming. And I, he's not just like Teddy, he's, he's, he's different, although he has a lot of similarities, but I'm so glad that I adopted Alfie and that he has a loving home and he makes he makes Jeff and I smile every day. Like today, um, we got the cat some new toys and they're like little, they're little balls that are kind of um, furry. And Alfie took every single toy from the cat. And I think he had like 12 toys in his bed at once. So he's a toy hoarder, um, but he makes Jeff and I smile. So um, basically I do not regret getting him and he didn't obviously replace my other dog, but he, just we love having a boy Yorkie. He's he is a blast. Yes, absolutely, Sharon. I really am going to make a video. Um, and I'm so sorry I haven't done that yet. I need to really jot down some bullet points. And I think I also just have to tell myself that it doesn't have to be perfect, that I just have to get the video out there with because I've done so much research on on having a good YouTube. And I really learned a lot this December. I feel like when I watch my old YouTube videos, they're not as good as the videos I make now. And that is just a part of creating that you get better as you go. Um, and I think one of the things that I need to realize with making a video about how to YouTube is that I can make it and then I can make it again in three months if I decide to add things, but that I should make it so that you can, you can get your YouTube going. Um, so I will actually, I'm trying to think of which one I can really only do one a week. So maybe I will do that one first and I can talk about the equipment that I use. Um, you know, the cameras, I, cause I have several cameras. I have one camera that sits on a stand. It's like a Canon rebel and, um, it has a halo light attached and I never move that because it's my big heavy camera. 
And then I have a really little camera that I can move around everywhere to get B-roll. So I kind of like know the easy, good products. And um, that said, you don't even have to get a camera because you can use the video camera on your iPhone if you prefer. So if you don't want to invest in equipment, um, there's really easy, almost no equipment ways that you can do it. And you can face, like I'm facing a window. You always want light to be coming onto you from the front and never light from overhead because it will give you like almost black eyes. So um, I will make a video for you. Um, that's a great idea, Sharon. Carla, how are you? It's so nice to see you here again. It says, we will be bringing our Yorkie daughter, I love that it's your Yorkie daughter, home at the end of March. Should I put a pee pad in the playpen with the baby? I have seen that sometimes. Um, Carla, I actually have a really good video on house training Yorkies. So if you look um, in my Yorkie playlist or under my uploads, I did, it's about a 20 minute video and it talks all about that. Um, and I go into depth about play pens and, um, and crates and things like that. I think you'll really like that video. It's been a lot of people have commented and said that it was very helpful. Um, so please definitely watch that video and let me know what you think. And if you have any any questions from there, but I'm so excited for you. Um, and like I tell everybody that's getting a New Yorkie puppy, please make sure to get dog insurance. Um, I use Trupanion and I've got a link to that, but whatever dog insurance that you think is best, just make sure you've got good insurance for when you bring your Yorkie home. Hi Simba. And this says, is it okay to use hypoallergenic cloths like baby wipes? that are fragrance free and 99% water that are made without alcohol, parabens. I can never, never say this word. I think it's phthalates and, um, oh my gosh, I feel like I can't read. Fino something to clean my, um, my son's eyes and paws. Um, you know, honestly, you, you could, if you need to, I don't think I would use it for the eyes though. I just don't think there's really any reason. Um, I think good old water around the eyes is the best thing. So you can always kind of fold a paper towel or a soft cloth um, that's fresh and put some warm water on it and clean your baby's eyes with that. I just, even with the most natural products, and I love that you know about phthalates and, and parabens and all those things because you do want to avoid them. But I, I don't think you have to use something like that around their eyes. I think you can just use water. And if you use water, and let me show you guys this, this little comb that I have from Madden brand, that should get everything out for you. And you, I don't think that you'll need a baby wipe. Um, I did just hear back from that company and I am going to be ordering some things for my website so that, you know, when you guys need the combs and things, I'm just going to have them on my shop, Megan Graham Beauty site. I'm going to have a special dog accessories page because I think we need some clean beauty stuff for our Yorkshire Terriers as well. Um, thank you for asking me though. I think, you know, on their paws, you could, all I really do is I run their paws underwater and then clean them. And I think that gets most of what I need to get off of their paws as well. And hello, Olivia. It says, yes, when I was looking for a breed of dog um, to get, I was very torn between Shih Tzu and Yorkie. When I watched your videos about Teddy, I fell in love as well as their very <laughs> yippy personality. Um, Teddy was, he was just awesome. I know you guys have probably seen him before, but he was the best Yorkie that I'll ever have in my entire life. And right, Jeff? He was special. Yeah, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff loved Teddy so much. And Teddy got to know Jeff for, we, only, we lost Teddy two years ago. So he got to have Jeff as a dad for four years. And when Jeff came, whenever Jeff was here, Teddy was right by Jeff's side. Like they would watch football together. And um, if Jeff went to get a haircut, he would take Teddy with him. So Teddy really liked having Jeff as a dad as well, which is super cute. But I, I love their personalities as well, Olivia. Sharon says, thanks, I'm looking forward to the video. So true about the fur babies, love having my tiny Yorkie. I think you'll like the video too. It's very simple, um, but I'm excited for you to start a YouTube. I'm so glad that the shutdown finally gave me the, the impetus to start mine because I love my YouTube. I get super excited about it and just getting on and chatting with you guys and talking to people all over the world um, and helping you guys have a happier and healthier relationship with your Yorkshire Terrier is, is my goal for sure. 
Um, and Sharon also says, your videos have been super helpful. I've had my fur baby since December and she's four months old, weighing two pounds. Wow, she is teensy tiny. I'm in love and I think, well, I know she loves me. I bet you she does. Um, Sharon, I could be wrong, but I feel like you would love this brand that I love as well. Um, if you Google Louie Dog on the internet, it's a really, really cute, I think it's a Korean brand and they have some of the cutest softest Yorkie beds and bags and things like that that I've ever seen. Um, I believe that the company Teacups Puppies carries them, but I should put some links to that stuff too because they are super cute. And my the beds from Louie Dog are all my dog's favorites, like absolutely their favorites. Um, I'm really glad that these were helpful to you though. That makes me so happy. By the way, did you guys notice I'm wearing my Yorkie hairstyle today? <laughs> Who wore it better, me or the Yorkies? Um, I just got back from the gym and I just wanted to get my hair out of my face. Um, and this hairstyle always does that for me. Um, hey, JW, w, JW, how are you? Um, have I enrolled my dogs in a wellness plan or just pet insurance? I'm either getting a Yorkie or a Morkie sometime this year. Um, I don't have them in a wellness plan. I just um, I just got pet insurance, um, although I just sort of do wellness things for them. So I feel like I make sure to use non-toxic cleaners and I have air filters around my house. Um, I give them filtered water from a Berkey water filter, which I use for myself. Um, I just do a lot of the wellness stuff for my dogs that I do for myself. I use... Um, you know, shampoo and conditioner that does not have any synthetic fragrance. Um, I really just try not to, I, I don't put them down on salt outside. I try to really limit their exposure to toxins. And when, um, when it was okay to have someone in the apartment, I also had a dog masseuse that used to come every six weeks and give them a massage. So I just basically out of pocket do some wellness stuff for them. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a wellness plan. I would just think about how you might use it. Um, and that would be, you know, just, I, I don't know exactly what they offer for wellness plans, but I just do mine um, out of pocket. Um, Leah, it's so nice to see you on here. I'm glad you were shopping for some stuff on Amazon for your new puppy. I feel like the countdown is on. Aren't you getting, are you getting her next week? I feel like it's really, really soon. And I'm really excited for you. Um, yes, uh, the name of a company. Let me look it up right now, Sharon. I will tell you. Um, it is. Let's see. So the only thing is, um, I I've never actually ordered directly from Louis Dog. Um, you can look on their website, but they, they actually don't have a great website. Um, so I usually, I'll tell you the name of the brand, but I would probably look somewhere else to buy it. So it is spelled L O U I S D O G dot com. Um, but I believe they have it at posh puppy. And they also have it. If you search teacups puppies and you go to their shop page, they have Louis dog things. Um, they're just so cute. Like I'll show you my phone just so you can see super, super cute little pastel things. And, um, just to give you an idea, <laughs> Alfie's so good. He's just laying here waiting for me to finish his face. Um, let me see if I can give you guys a good example of, I think that their beds and their carriers are amazing. Here's a cute carrier that I can show you. Let's see. My phone's being super slow. Like here's a, it'll be easier for you guys when you're looking, but like super cute little sling bags. Um, all of the materials that they use are so soft and the bags and carriers and beds are all among my dog's favorites. So I have two bassinets that are by Louis dog and the dogs and the cat are the cat's finally relaxing, but the dogs and the cat all argue over them. So I definitely recommend their stuff. It is beautiful.
Um, Ashlyn, so I don't think that AKC is enough of a guarantee to buy a dog. The AKC is actually pretty lax about who they will um, certify. And I do think that there's probably a lot of puppy mills that could be AKC registered. Um, I would say to go to the Yorkshire Terrier Club of America and um, find a breeder that's a show breeder that way or to adopt a Yorkie. Um, I think I talk a little bit more about it. I have a video and it's, um, it's about the price of a Yorkshire Terrier. And I talk a little bit more about it but no, I don't think just seeing the parents is enough. And I'll also tell you that there are definitely some unscrupulous people that will tell you that you're seeing the parents, but just because someone tells you that you're seeing a Yorkie's parents doesn't unfortunately mean that they're, it, it doesn't mean that they're telling the truth. So a long time ago, I wanted to get my mom a Yorkie after my little brother passed away. Sorry, Alfie. And um, I went to this woman and I think she was out in Sutton, Massachusetts. And she said that the Yorkie's parents were on the premises, but come to find out that she was actually, sorry, I just got a little Yorkie hair around my nose. Um, come to find out that she was actually a puppy broker and she was only pretending to have the Yorkie's parents. So um, I think there's a, there's a saying and it's believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. So just know that just because someone's saying that the parents are on the premises, it does not, it, it doesn't mean that that's true. Um, and I think that a good Yorkie breeder is really going to be looking into genetic issues and um, personalities and aesthetics and all those things that should be accounted for when breeding a Yorkie. Um, and granted, even if you get them from an amazing breeder, they can still have health problems. So you don't have a guarantee. But I think that when someone is breeding them and they're an amateur and they just have they have a dog and they decide that it should be bred and they get another dog you're bound to have issues. So um, I would just be careful of who you get a puppy from, but really I think adopting or um, going on the Yorkshire Terrier Club of America to find a breeder that you can safely drive to would be would be my, you know, my best advice. And just know that most likely if you find a good breeder, you're not going to just be able to pick up a puppy that week. So just know that good things are worth waiting for. And, you know, if it's going to be six months, you'd rather wait six months to have a great, beautiful dog that's easy to socialize than, you know, to go to a pet store or, you know, someplace that, you know, I know a lot of people don't know better. So I'm not trying to make you feel bad if that's how you got your dog, but it's not the best place to go. So just try to, you know, educate yourself. And um, I would say AKC alone is not is not enough, in my opinion. I think you'll really like it, Sharon. I'm glad that you're looking it up. It's super cool stuff. And I think it, it just suits your personality. You'll love that stuff. And you're so welcome, Ashlyn. Um, just let me know how it's going with your search. But I know it's hard to wait, but I promise it will definitely be worth it. Um, all of my dogs, I did adopt two of them when they were older, but they all came from a Yorkshire Terrier. Let me put this down a little bit more so you can see Alfie, by the way. Um, so all of them came from a Yorkie show breeder and I did adopt two of them when they were older um, but I have to say she gave me such beautiful dogs and I'm so glad that that's how I got my dogs. You're such a good boy Alfie. <laughs> Sorry I told you about that Sharon. You're going to spend all your money on the cutest Yorkie accessories ever now. Um, but you will, it will be so worth it. And the dog beds last forever. Um, they're so much better than most of the beds that I've seen. So um, it's, it's totally worth it if you buy from that brand for sure. Alfie, he is not, <laughs> he doesn't want me to finish brushing him. Come on, buddy. I know that we've got to brush you back here too. You're really tangled. Come here. They just had their bath yesterday and they always tend to have a little bit of tangling after their hair has been wet. So he's not very happy and he wants to get away. I'm sorry, buddy. I know, but we need to get tangles out. It's not good. Do you want to get brushed too? Jeff, look at the cat. <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. Okay, I think you've had enough, haven't you? 
where you do have a little tangle here. I am going to read a couple more questions from here. Um, this is from Kathy Zuckerman. And yesterday she said, I'm getting two Yorkies next Friday, one for me and one for my daughter. That is amazing. You guys are so lucky. We are so excited and love watching your show. When are you on live so I can join you? So Kathy, I usually am on live on Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, I'm going to be hopping on for a quick live tomorrow, but tomorrow I'm going to be talking about um, some of my, I know people wanted me to hop on and just talk about a few fitness things tomorrow. So tomorrow mine will be a little bit different because I'm going to talk a bit about uh, food prep, fitness, motivation, and getting in shape for spring. I'll be back on on Wednesday with another Yorkie Storytime Live. Um, and I need to get my times up sooner. My times have been changing a little bit here and there because I've had so much going on the last few weeks. Um, for those of you that don't know, I also own a hair salon and it's been super busy, not too busy. We're still spacing, we're still distancing, but people are calling and I'm getting really organized and it has been absolutely great. Let's see. Um, this is a really good question. It is from, I think it's, I don't know how to pronounce it. It might be Map, Mapton. Um, it says, hey, I found a reputable breeder in my country, but the only available Yorkie is female. Can you tell me if females are as sweet and affectionate as male dogs? I want the dog to cuddle with me and kiss me and be around me all the time. And from what I read, girls are not so much like that. Can you give me your opinion? Um, I think girls are really, really friendly as well. They're I would say they're a little bit different than boys, but my two girls are super, super sweet. Um, Lola is probably a little bit more friendly than, um, than Poppy, but Poppy's really friendly too. She just, she likes her alone time. Um, but I think you would be honestly just as happy with a girl as you would be a boy. Um, either way, Yorkies are the best companions. Um, I would say like Poppy probably likes my husband, she, she, Poppy loves me, but she's obsessed with my husband. So it just depends on the dog. But I, if I, even if I only had one, any one of my Yorkies, I would still be really happy because they all have the best personalities. Um, and I think any, you know, any sex of Yorkie that you get is going to fall in love with you. And, you know, if you are a kind owner that takes them on walks and brushes them and treats them well, your dog is going to love you so much. So it really doesn't matter, boy or girl, um, it's going to be great. I have two, I have a boy cat and a boy Yorkie, and then I have two girl Yorkies, and they're all amazing. Jeff, do you think that boys or girls are friendlier, or do you think it's about the same? I think it's about the same. He thinks it's the same, different too. Ways. Yeah, different personalities. Like The girls are not quite as clingy, um, even the boy, Alfie, my boy, and my um, my boy cat follow me everywhere. Like if I'm vacuuming the house, they're both watching me the entire time and so curious about what I'm doing. So it's I think they're pretty similar. I don't know what you guys think, but that has been my experience. What a sweet little cat kitten this guy is. I'm super excited for you, LJ. And I love that it depends um, on her size the day that you're getting her. It sounds like you have a really good breeder that they're waiting to see and that they want your Yorkie to be, you know, strong enough and big enough to go home with you. So it sounds like you picked, you did your research and you got a great, great breeder. Um, Carla, that's a really good question about the tail uh, and why some breeders dock the tail and why some do not. I believe that show breeders all dock the tail because I think it's the show standard to have a, a, a docked tail. I could be incorrect, but I'm, I'm fairly sure that all of the show dogs do have a docked tail. Um, it's fine. You know, if you don't have a docked tail, that's fine because I know most of you are not going to be, you know, showing your Yorkshire Terriers. Um, but all of mine have always had docked tails. Although I would say that for some reason, 
Poppy's tail is not as, it's not as short the way it's stopped as um, like say Lola's and Alfie's, like they just have these little fluffy little cotton tails basically. Hi Doris, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad that you're enjoying story time. I feel like it's just a nice relaxing Sunday visit with you guys and I always um, just love it when I get the questions and just to hear that you guys are on here. Um, if you guys are just joining now and you weren't on before, um, I know I had just mentioned to everybody that I so appreciate it. If you go ahead and click that like button when you're watching, and if you have not already subscribed to my channel, it means a lot to me. If you hit that subscribe button, you will be notified when there are Yorkie Storytime Lives, as well as when my new videos come out. And I just, I welcome any comments and questions that you have. And I just appreciate you guys taking the time to watch me. It's, it means a lot. Look at this beautiful boy. Oh, are you, are you a good boy? Why do you look like that? You want to look, there you go. There you go. Isn't Alfie so cute? He's, I think he's the cutest little boy. Good boy, you're all done. You can go see daddy. There you go. Who's next? It's not the cat. Looks like Poppy's next. <laughs> She's patiently waiting. She has a little scrunchie in because she got her bath time yesterday. Poppy's the shy one. It's okay, Poppy. Olivia, that's great that your breeder was a vet. I would imagine that a vet would be an absolutely great breeder. That is um, that is expensive. Um, my None of my Yorkies cost that much. Um, I think sometimes, it depends when you got her. Um, I think you got her really recently. Um, I think people have been charging a bit more for dogs. Um, my dogs did not cost $4,500. Um, but you were willing to pay for a quality dog and a kind breeder. Absolutely. I mean, I would just imagine that a vet puts so much into breeding and I think it's just fine to buy from a vet for sure, because vets obviously are vets because they love animals. So they're, they're going to do a great job of breeding dogs for sure. Glad that they do a background check as well. Also great. I don't trust any breeder that is not really looking at someone to see if they would be a good owner. I know if I were a dog breeder, I would be like, where's your fingerprint scan? <laughs> I'm going to, I want references and all those things. So um, that's great when someone is really looking into them because they're sending their babies home with you. So I know that my my breeder that I got my dogs from has always been so happy. And she said that I've taken the best care of the dogs. And she's also, she was super happy when I met my husband too, because I told her how much he loves the dogs and that made her feel really happy. She was extra happy that they would now have two owners. Although like, they're really mine. Let's, let's be real. Right, Jen? <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're ours. They're yours too. Um, LJ, that is such a great question about Yorkie's glands. Do they need their glands expressed? Um, and do I, my groomer or the vet express them and how often do they need it done? Um, so yes, they do need it done. I don't express their grand glands and I don't have a, um, a groomer do it. It really varies. Um, honestly, I mean, sometimes your dogs won't need their glands expressed. It really depends on the dog in general. However, if you see your dog scooting around and by scooting, I mean dragging their rear end on the carpet as basically it looks like they're trying to wipe their tiny little Yorkie bum on the floor. And that normally does mean that they need to get their glands expressed. It varies with me. They don't need it done all the time. Um, but when I see that, I contact my vet and he lets me bring them right in and they do the glands then. Um, I don't do the glands unless I see that. So I don't just have them on a schedule. So it's strange because sometimes it seems to be like every three months and sometimes it seems to be every six months. Um, I will say my dogs have really gotten a lot of exercise since, um, since COVID and things like that. Come on, Poppy, we're gonna flip you over. And I, I could be wrong, but I feel like since they've gotten more exercise, they don't seem to need their glands expressed. So 
not sure if that's true, but it just hasn't really been an issue lately. And it seems like before the shutdowns, they needed it done a lot more frequently. So I'm not sure what you guys think, but it seems to be impacting. Um, I think their digestive health has been better. Um, I think they just, they feel better with all the exercise and special time with me that they've been getting. Um, before the shutdown, I mean, I'm still very busy as you guys know, but before the shutdown, I don't think I made enough time to be at home and to, to take them on walks. And so they were often with a walker. And that is something that has really changed because I didn't, I didn't have a walker for a while. And I just realized that that was actually the most fun part of my day was being outside and seeing them happy and get their exercise. Olivia, I love that she checks to see how Toffee is doing. Um, I just, I think that a good breeder, just, just like the vet that you used as a breeder, really cares about the dogs. I mean, they, they took the time to breed them. They obviously took really, really great care of them when they were babies. And um, it's, of course they care, right? They're, they're family forever. So I send, um, I send the breeder that bred all of my dogs updates, texts, and things like that. And she loves to see. And I also, so I have a, a cat breeder as well because I have a cat now and she is always so happy. She's like, you are so good about getting me updates. And it, it makes her really smile. Um, I told her that Simba is really funny and he loves to, so he sits on the stairs just to my, my left and he loves to not let the dogs up the stairs. He's like king of the mountain. Um, and she said that his mom, believe it or not, was actually just the same and that a friend was watching the mom and the, <laughs> the, the mama cat would not let these dogs use their dog door. So they're, they're very playful and they're, I think, Siberian cats are maybe a little bit, do you think he's bossy, Jeff? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think we call him King Simba yeah. and we think he's like a little, a little bossy because he's starting to realize that he's bigger than the dogs and um, Lola still bosses him around and, and, you know, tells him he can't play with his toy and tells him when it's time for bed, but he's starting to figure out that he's not a tiny, you know, a tiny kitten. So it's, it's kind of funny. Um, LJ, I've never heard of plucking inner ear hair from Yorkies like poodles. Um, when I'm going to look at my dogs right now, they definitely have, they definitely have little hairs inside their ears. I don't pluck them at all. Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like the hairs inside of their ears most likely serve a purpose to filter out dirt and dust and pollutants. So, um, just instinctively, I would not pluck their, their ear hair. Um, I think it's there to protect their ears. Um, so I, I don't touch it. I just keep everything untangled and clean. Um, and when I am shampooing them, I actually put my hand over their ear to keep it closed and keep water out of their ear. Because when you get a lot of water inside your Yorkie's ear, it's very, um, it's very easy to start an ear infection and you don't want to start any kind of infection in your Yorkie. It's not the end of the world. But like most things, if you can avoid it, they're going to be healthier and it's going to be better. And then you won't need to give them any, any treatment or um, antibiotics and things. Hi, Cynthia. It's really nice to see you on here today. Thanks for, thanks for joining in the conversation. It's always, I love it when people comment and, and chat on here. It says, you started brushing Scooter's teeth as soon as we got him at 12 weeks old. He loves getting his teeth brushed. That's so cute. I say time to brush your teeth and he beats me to the bathroom. That's so funny. Um, I really do think that anything that you start when your, your puppy is a puppy, when your Yorkie is a puppy, or if you have a cat when it's a kitten, um, they get used to and it becomes something normal. And if you make it fun and you speak to them, you know, in a nice, pleasant way, then they enjoy it and you're just starting a great new habit. Um, I just ordered some really cute new toothbrushes from Amazon because I realized that theirs were pretty old. And I love the toothbrushes that I get from Amazon. They're really tiny for their mouths and they work really well. So 
I don't think that they came in yet. They're taking kind of a long time, but when they do, if you guys would like to see what I use for toothbrushes, I'll definitely show you and I'll show you um, as well what I've been using for toothpaste. Oh, Poppy, you look so pretty. What a beautiful girl. I think I'm gonna do a little, maybe a little scrunchie on Poppy today, I'm not sure. And I've got, I had multicolored for Alfie and I'm gonna do super cute little pink bands for the girls. Um, Olivia, so what age did I get Teddy? Teddy was, um, he was still young, but he was a little older than Lola. I want to say that when I got Teddy, he was about four months old. Um, he might have even been a little older than four months old. And I remember at the time, I thought that that was old. And I also thought he was going to be too big. And so I told the breeder, I was like, I don't want a boy Yorkie. And I wanted a really small Yorkie and, and a really young one. And she was like, four months is still so young. And boy, Yorkies are amazing. And Teddy, I think Teddy was about seven pounds. He was less, he weighed less during chemo because he got a little bit skinny. He had some stomach issues from that chemo. Um, but he, yeah, I think he was seven pounds, like at his sort of pinnacle of health. And um, just in case you guys haven't seen Teddy, I know that some of you guys are just joining us for the first time. I just want to show you a photo. Um, he was so cute. It was unbelievable. Um, here he is smiling. Sorry for the reflection from outside, but here he is smiling and just super, super happy because he was the most easygoing little guy in the world. Um, this is also one of my favorite, favorite pictures. Just so much sunlight bathing his cute little face. And this is when Lola was a baby and Teddy is guarding her cradle to make sure she's okay. He was really funny because he was really ornery and he acted like he didn't love Lola, but he loved Lola so much. They were best, best friends. You look great, Poppy. You're a good girl. Oh my gosh, Cynthia, that's so cute that you got a little raincoat. I would love that. <laughs> so funny. So last week, Cynthia, was it you that was saying that you dress your husband? Yes, you dress your husband and Scooter the same. Definitely that was you, I remember now. Jeff, we're going to start dressing Alfie and you the same. Okay. Let's see what, what do you think, Jeff? Can we get you guys some matching outfits? That sounds cool. See, look, he'll let me. It's so good. He's like, okay, can you wear like a Yorkie ponytail, honey? Uh, yeah, maybe. he'll. I have a picture of Jeff wearing a Yorkie ponytail. Don't don't let him pretend like he won't. He will. <laughs> um, thanks, Olivia. His one ear up and one ear down was his signature cuteness. Um, it actually happened because I did not get him groomed soon enough when he was little, and his ears got really heavy. But it turned out to be the most. It just adorable thing about him. So I loved that he looked like that. Um, he also had a different kind of hair color. Um, he got chemo starting from the age of, I want to say he was seven and he had chemo to suppress his immune system because he had an autoimmune disorder called GME and it changed his hair color and it made it extra curly and extra white and extra cute. Um, so Thanks so much for your compliments on him. Even though he's not with me anymore, he's still, I think when you've had a dog, it whether they're with you or not, they're always your dog. I mean, it's like if you had a sibling or a grandparent, you love them forever. And for me, it's not sad to talk about him. It's just like, I'm still very proud of him and I'm still his mom. Um, so thanks so much because he's it makes me smile to be able to talk about Teddy to you guys and um, just that you've seen his pictures and things. The video that I made about how I got my Yorkie puppies, um, I did a lot of photos of my dogs and there's really beautiful music playing. And my mom, she loved, like she loved Teddy so much. And she was like, I was crying when I watched that video and I watched Teddy, but it also made her so happy because, you know, she, 
just loved him and she loved him just as much as I did because she was his grandmother. <laughs> so um, if you guys have not seen the video, which is how I got my Yorkie puppies, you might enjoy that. And it's, I think the pictures are super fun and it tells the story of how each of them came to be because Poppy came to me. Well, she, out of the three, when I had Teddy and Lola, Poppy came to me last. And now Poppy is the second one that I got because Alfie is the last Yorkie. We call him diaper man or pamps because he's usually wearing pampers because he has really, he has really inconsistent potty habits. And when my husband's home, Jeff, does Alfie like to pee on your stuff sometimes? Uh, uh, yes. 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 So Al Jeff has to like lift his bag up and things because Alfie loves Jeff, but he's also very jealous of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Cynthia Scooter treats you differently from your hubby. He cuddles and lays on my lap. So Jeff is pretty jealous of the relationship that Alfie and I have because when I'm around, Alfie doesn't pay attention to Jeff at all. So Jeff likes it when I go to work because he says that Alfie pays attention to him. But like Jeff is almost <laughs> invisible to Alfie. Sorry, honey. <laughs> I thought so, Cynthia. That was such a good story. And also Scooter's name is so great. Um, that's so cute that Scooter's ears did that too. I love that. Do I give my dogs frozen blueberries? So I don't LJ. And the reason that I don't is that Lola, I don't know if I've told you this before, but Lola doesn't have any teeth. So I'm kind of careful about what I give, um, what I give the other dogs because I don't want to leave Lola out and I don't think it would be safe for her to eat frozen blueberries. Um, so the only time I give the other dogs treats is basically if Lola's not here because um, I don't want her to feel left out and everything. Um, but I bet you they would love frozen blueberries if I could give them to her. Oh, that's so cute, Olivia. Your Yorkie loves frozen blueberries. I didn't know that that was a thing. Um, I will say that Just Food for Dogs does have blueberries in their food, and they definitely, definitely love those. Um, so cute that he loves green beans too. I think dogs really do love fruits and vegetables and carrots. Um, when Lola had teeth, she loved carrots and she also loved apples as well. Okay, Poppy, you're all set. We're going to get Lola now. Lolita, where's Lola? Is she hiding because she doesn't want to be brushed on? Uh, I don't know where she is. Lola. Oh, she's right here. Can you, you want to bring her? Jeff's going to bring Lola. Lola. Lola's hiding because I think she doesn't want to be brushed. And she more than anyone needs to be brushed because she needs a grooming so much. Thank you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Look whose turn it is. This dog really, she really needs to be brushed. Is this your best friend, Simba? Simba loves Lola so much and they are inseparable. When I put him to bed, Lola always wants to go in and see how he's doing. Hey, buddy. Look at Alfie in the background. He looks so handsome. Let's see if I can move so you can see. Are you a handsome boy? Here it is. Are you the pampered goblin? Yes, he is. Let's see. I want to see some other things. People made a lot of comments. Oh, somebody liked that I got right to the point, which is great. I love that. Um, and she got a new corky. What is a corky? Does anyone know? A York it must be a Yorkie mixed with something. What is it mixed with to make a corky? I'm sure it's adorable, but I don't know what it is. Um, and Courtney asked, could I do a beauty live stream, talk about healthy eating workouts and willpower, just all things health and beauty. I'm going to do that tomorrow, um, a health and beauty uh, live stream. For those of you that don't know, um, I own a beauty salon. I manufacture beauty products. I have a clean beauty website called Shop Megan Graham Beauty, and I make super cute little makeup towels that say makeup. They're bleach resistant, and they're they're amazing. So and I'm a Best of Boston award-winning hair colorist, and um, I love Yorkies. So I have a lot of different, um, a lot of different things, and I am a bikini pro for the WBFF. So I know a lot about health and fitness and how to stay in shape without. I don't want to say without putting effort in, but without spending 
all day long trying to get in shape and without wasting your time. So love all that stuff. Um, Pauline was on three days ago and she said, love your videos. Is this product good on laminate floors? She's talking about the, um, the product that I was talking about, which is BioClean. And um, she's saying, is it good on laminate floors? I'm not really sure. I've never honestly had laminate floors. Um, I would assume so. If they can have products on them, I don't see why it would not work. I'm pretty sure. Jeff, laminate's pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say yes, definitely would work on laminate floors. I've just never had them. But if your two-year-old Yorkie goes in the same spot, absolutely. You want to treat it with an enzyme cleaner. So at least your dog is not smelling that. Um, and this is a really important one. This is from Oliuska um, Cardenas. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I'm probably butchering your name and I am sorry. Um, it says, I live in New York and I went to a pet shop and a Yorkie was $3,300. Do you think this is a reasonable price? please, please, please do not buy from a pet shop. Um, if you guys have already done it, um, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but pet shops are the worst place to buy your dog from. A hundred percent, they are not treating the parents correctly. You may be buying a dog that was separated from its mom too early and you just don't want to support that. If you've already done it, again, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but if you have not done it, um, please go ahead and either rescue a dog or get your dog from a reputable breeder. But pet stores are just a, they're a terrible thing to support. I don't think there should be such a thing. Um, dogs deserve great treatment too. And you are going to fall so in love with your Yorkie and you'll feel so much better if you get a Yorkie and you know that that Yorkie's, you know, mama and that Yorkie's dad were treated well. Um, and you really, you basically know when you buy from a pet store, that the parents were not treated well and that they didn't have a life and they probably lived in cages. So um, don't do it. Don't even think about it. If you've already done it, just don't do it again, please. Uh, buy from a reputable breeder that gives the dogs a life. Um, Alfie is, for those of you that don't know, Alfie's a show champion. Um, he was given to me by a breeder and I, he is still bred. So he still fathers puppies maybe once a year, once every other year. Um, and the deal is that he's mine, but I need to bring him back so he can be bred. So as you can see, Alfie is living his best pet life. He's not confined to a cage. And it's because the breeder felt that he deserved a life, you know, and, and she treats all of her dogs so well, but she said he deserves a pet life. And if you don't mind that I'm going to borrow him back for, you know, four days a year, if you can live with that, then he can live with you. And so a good breeder cares about their dogs and wants them to be happy and healthy. Oh, Lola, Lola's really mad because she is, her hair is so long right now. So she's really, she's just getting really tangled. Like when I take her to the groomer, we are going to take like a, that body hair is going to be so, so short and she's going to look so much smaller. I'm actually thinking that it would be really cute to do a video on a before and after for Lola. And I was thinking it might be fun to kind of talk about like how I communicate with my groomer, um, how I make sure that the dogs are taken care of and how I get what I want for the dog's grooming. I know that sounds super simple, but I've found that a lot of people get results that they're not always that pleased with from the groomer. And I think it's all how you ask for it. Um, and how you communicate with your groomer. Um, and I have a, also they have to be good at what they do because you could communicate all day long. And if you don't have someone that can, has the ability to do the haircut that you want, your dog might not get a good haircut. And I mean, it kind of matters. Your dog can look a lot better, right? When they get a good haircut, just like people. I get to make people over in my beauty salon all the time. And, um, it, it makes such a big difference. Um, you guys might be interested to see. So when I got, when I got Alfie from the breeder, um, she had given him the worst haircut and I can't help it. I love, I love when things look good. And I had said, could you please, please, please not cut the dog. And she did cut his hair. So I just want to give you guys an example because I think many, many times when people are thinking about getting a dog from a shelter, they might look at that dog and think, and this is terrible, but they might think it's not that cute. I want a cute Yorkie. You can make any Yorkie look cute. It's really just a matter of a little love, a little primping. So 
This is what Alfie looked like when I first got him. He's still cute, but we can all admit that's a pretty bad haircut. Sorry, my hands are a little shaky. But um, he has like almost no hair on his head. He kind of looks like a schnauzer. And I took him into my groomer right away and just said, please, 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 can you give him, you know, a better haircut, a little makeover, because he deserves better than this. And when he came back, I'll show you guys what he looked like. Isn't that so much better? She rounded out his face. He has a little t-shirt on. He still had some growing out to do, but I just think he looked significantly better. And then when it grew out and he had a ponytail, he looked amazing. Um, have I tried doggy ice cream from the grocery store? I noticed that last week. I have not, LJ. Um, honestly, I personally would be pretty suspect. Um, sorry, guys, I have a dog hair on my mouth. This is one of the, I don't know if this happens to you guys. When you're grooming, it's one of the dangers of grooming dogs, right? Um, anyway, I, I can look into it if you want to tell me the brand, but I don't really trust things that are edible for my dog from the grocery store. Um, I just don't necessarily think that they always have the best ingredients. Um, I can look into it. I don't really do a lot of treats for my dogs. I just do a lot of special attention and pampering and they just get their regular food. Um, they do occasionally get a few pieces of cat food because the cat kicks some of his food down to them and they love, I know cat food isn't the best thing for dogs, but they love when they just get a few pieces of his little kitten food. They get so, so excited about it. Um, but I would be careful about buying stuff from the grocery store because I feel like there's, there's a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily want your dog to eat. And it's probably all sold at the grocery store. Um, This says a lot of Yorkie owners make their own pet food. Have you done that for your babies? So Cynthia, I used to do that. Um, I really found it helped with Teddy. Lola's getting so mad. It helped with Teddy because his belly was really sick from chemotherapy. And I found that all of those um, foods that they said were for dogs with sensitive stomachs, I would look on the label and it had like 65 ingredients and I couldn't pronounce any of them. And I don't want to feed my dog something that I can't pronounce. I don't think it's good for it. I don't want to eat that for myself. Um, I think there's gross stuff that's not real food that people try to feed dogs. And so, yes, I started, you know, cooking for my dogs. And the issue was that it is you really need a lot of ingredients to be balanced and to give your dog something balanced. And that was why I did my research. And I read this ebook called The Truth About Pet Foods. And she was able to basically in that book, she recommends super, super healthy um, foods that are human grade. So it's just like cooking for your dog, but you don't have to do all the work and it is balanced um, and there's a variety so you can rotate. So that's how I get my food now. Um, it gets shipped to me frozen. It's a little extravagant. I do pay a lot. I mean, it's not a million dollars, but like, I feel like my pets are worth it. I eat great food and they eat great food and they love just food for dogs. I heat it up a little bit in the oven. Um, I mean, technically if it's human grade. So if I were out of food, I guess I could eat that food. Not that I am dying to, cause it's kind of a weird, oh, Lola's so mad. I'm sorry, Lola, but you're tangly today. Um, but I could eat it. It's human grade. I know it's safe. I know it's good quality. I would eat it myself if I, if, you know, if I had to, if I was on a desert island. And um, so I would, I personally would do that. If you have the time, then you could also go, I know Just Food for Dogs has actual recipes and you can just make the recipes that they have as well. Um, I am just so short on time. And sometimes, Lola, you have to let me press you. I know you're being sassy. Okay. Um, but so if I had time, sure, I would do it myself, but I don't feel like I need to with Just Food for Dogs. Um, but there's nothing wrong with doing it yourself. Just make sure that you get a great recipe that is safe for your dog. Um, and if your dog isn't feeling well, consider changing the protein. It's definitely important to rotate what you feed your dog, because if you constantly feed it the same thing, it is very possible that they will develop an allergy or a sensitivity to that food. So I think, um, our dogs get a, uh, I think they get white fish 
beef, lamb, and I think they eat duck as well. They don't eat chicken or turkey. Um, they have sensitive, you know, they, they don't do well. Lola, if she eats chicken, her eyes get very, very gummy um, and they almost close up. So she has a chicken allergy for sure. Um, so I, but I rotate those foods all the time. They never eat the same thing. And it just, it does really, really it's, it does really well for them. And I love just food for dogs. Um, I also used Evermore for a while and I liked them as well. Um, I think they're both really good companies. They care about pets. And I think the ladies at Evermore actually did a challenge where they ate the Evermore dog food themselves for a month. And that was all they ate. So, you know, people can eat it if they did that. Um, Cynthia Scooter's stomach is, um, oh, it says, actually, I'm going to go up a little bit because there's a lot of comments here. Thanks guys. Um, it says, it says, let's see, what is the, what is the best food for Yorkie puppies that I would suggest? Um, I would look at the ebook, just food for dogs. Um, Royal canine. Nope. I wouldn't use that for sure. If you look at that book, sorry, but, um, that's a super commercial dog food and there's it's feed grade and it, Sorry, it's not good for dogs. I know it's highly recommended, but it's not good. Um, Olivia says, no, I use white rice. After research, I just avoid anything controversial. Um, Olivia says, my Yorkie has a sensitive stomach. And after going through a lot of food, homage was the way, or homemade was the way to go. Um, Olivia, a lot of dogs are, are allergic to York, or are allergic to chicken and turkey. I think it has something to do with uh, an ingredient that's in a vaccine, but I'm not sure. But um, please do check out the the Just Food for Dogs. But I do like Evermore, and I do like Just for, Food for Dogs very much. Um, there's a lot of Yorkies with really sensitive stomachs. Um, uh, AAAA is asking how much should a Yorkie three months old weigh? Um, it really depends on your dog. There's no answer for that. Um, just like people, they all have different sizes. So that would be a great question to check with a vet to see. Um, you know, it just depends. What's your Yorkie's eventual um, weight going to be? Is it is it a 10 pound Yorkie or is it a five pound Yorkie? Because depending on how big it's going to be, their weight at three months could really, really vary. So there is no, there's no answer that I can give you for that. Um, Olivia says, I tried everything. I was in a crunch because my toffee was vomiting blood. Oh no. So the vet gave us a sample of a ton of sensitive stomachs and it made her and only making her food work so far for her. Um, Olivia, uh, if you have a pen, go ahead and write this down. Uh, Dr. Dobius, it's D-O-B-I-A-S, and read a little bit, uh, maybe Google Dr. Dobius and commercial dog food, and you'll see that a lot of the, the big brand name commercial dog foods actually cause a lot of health problems. I know this is not widely known. I didn't know this when I was younger, but um, they talk about them as if they're so great, but there's a lot of ingredients that are they're feed grade, not food grade. And feed grade can be dead animals or diseased animals. And a lot of those companies that everyone thinks are great are using those. So um, check out what Dr. Dobia says and please get the book Just Food for, uh, it's the truth about pet foods. And it's it's $10, you make a donation. It's the best money you'll ever spend. And Olivia, just um, feel free to comment later and I can always give you a link if you didn't write it down, but it made such a big difference for me in my pet's health. I cannot tell you. Teddy also, um, Teddy was vomiting blood as well and uh, making homemade food made a big difference. You wouldn't believe it. There's, um, there are euthanized animals in a lot of commercial dog foods. So sometimes when people are euthanizing their dogs, they're having trouble actually euthanizing dogs because they've already ingested so much um, of the euthanization formula. So you really want to avoid a lot of those big commercial dog foods. Um, you would not believe what they put in their food. So sorry, it's controversial, but it's not good for your pet. And if you really research it, it's all in there. And, and the stuff that they do to dogs is, it's unbelievable. It is. Um, Oh, that's so funny that her ear stood up at three months. That Teddy's never went back up. Um, AA, how could you learn? How could you learn or make your Yorkie puppy learn to go to the balcony? Uh, I don't think I would teach my. 
I don't think I would teach my dog to use the balcony as a bathroom. One, you gotta be really careful. Yorkies can jump super, super far. I personally would not let a Yorkie out on the balcony by itself. If it gets onto something and then it gets onto the side of the balcony, your Yorkie could fall right off. Do not, just don't use your balcony as a bathroom. Um, keep it inside if you want. You could get one of those green things that it's grass that you can throw away later, but no, <laughs> don't put a Yorkie on a balcony. I've had mine jump up to five feet. You don't want to do that. Um, Doris says she's getting a new baby soon and you want to be on board for some good food for a little one. Um, definitely check out Just Food for Pets. Doris, I will look into it a little bit, uh, or I'm sorry, the truth about pet food to see what they say about puppy food. Um, I can't remember what my dogs had when they were babies. I don't think I gave them Just Food for Dogs. Um, you would want to ask the company if that's a good puppy food. Um, AA, how could I know if my Yorkie is going to be smaller? Again, I would talk to a vet and ask them. Um, I don't know how old is your Yorkie now and how much does it weigh? That would be my question for you. LJ is asking, I looked into natural balance, dog food, and it's human grade. Eh, I'm not sure about natural balance. I honestly, I'm I'm not sure about that dog food. If it's good dog food, again, please visit that book because um, I could be wrong, but I think natural balance, and I might be saying something that's not true. So do your research, but I believe natural balance was bought by a different company, a larger company. And I think the quality went down, but I could be wrong. If it's not in her book, I personally wouldn't buy it, but it's your dog and it's, it's your choice, obviously, but I'm not so sure about natural balance being great. I, I don't think so. Um, most of the big dog foods that you've heard of probably are not. I know it's, it's the opposite of what you would think, but I've done a lot of research. Um, how often should you switch the food? Um, I change their food all the time, but they're used to all the foods and I did not change it without getting them used to the food. So I did a little bit here and like, say I was switching their food. I might introduce a few teaspoons of the new food a day until they were finally used to another food. And I rotate between those three to four flavors constantly, but they're basically used to all of them. So it's not a shock to their system. Were I to change to a completely different brand, I would do that change very, very slowly. Um, I've actually thought about just doing a video about how to change over to a new dog food. There was someone on one of my videos that was saying that you could just do it right away. And that is the worst information I've ever heard. Um, you have to do it gradually or you can have a lot of GI issues, a lot of dehydration and and things of that nature. So it's, it's not good. Um, Yes, I know what you mean about food grade. I would still look into it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I don't want to be, I don't want to say anything bad about any companies, but I would really, I promise that book, The Truth About Pet Food is so informative. And she does so much research about how the animals were even handled that were used to make the dog food because all of that matters. You know, was it humane treatment? Um, so please, please read that book. I, I promise it will shed so much light on your pet food for you. Um, and you're welcome, Olivia. I'm glad you're going to look um, into him. I always like read about anything that he says. It's so helpful. Um, Stella and Chewy's. I'm not sure. I haven't read about that one. Um, it could be, I just, I, I chose the specific brands that I wanted to use. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure about Stella and Chewy's. It could be, it, it could not be, but definitely check it out in that book. I mean, what you feed your dog is so important. As you guys know, we are what we eat. So it's super, super important. Um, bye, Olivia. It was great to talk to you. I'm going to go in a minute too, because Jeff and I are going to take our babies out on a walk. Um, but it was so nice to chat with you. Thanks for coming on and participating in this discussion. I really appreciate it and have a great dinner. Um, Guys, do you have any more questions for me tonight? It's getting to be that close to sunset time. So my husband and I are going to put the dogs into their little their little puppy jackets. And the, the cat is going to try to go out with us like he always does. And we're going to take these little babies outside. So um, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, definitely, um, JW, do check out the book. It is so good. And um, okay, I will make a video on it, on um, feeding food and switching the food. I might even just break it down into just like, here's a video on how to switch your dog's food. I feel like it's, there's a lot of information that goes into everything, but it sounds like a great video idea. I always love it when you guys tell me what you would like to see. Um, 
Thanks again for joining me. If you have not already hit the like button, please go ahead and hit the like button. If you've not subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm going to be back on tomorrow with a live stream about fitness, beauty, and healthy eating habits to get ready for spring because that's a big, a big thing that I've been doing. Um, and I will be back on Wednesday with a little bit of your key story time live. So thank you guys. It was great to talk to you as always. Simba enjoyed sleeping through this. And I think my husband is super impressed by how much I can talk. <laughs> so Jeff says, bye. <laughs> bye guys. Thank you so much. Stay healthy and stay beautiful. I will talk to you tomorrow or Wednesday and enjoy your dinner, whatever you are doing, where you are.